Good morning, all. Welcome back to the course on Power Electronics. Today is the 13th lecture and the final class of Module 1. In this class, I will be discussing about some numerical problems, especially some concept welding questions. You can have a revision if you follow this video. So, coming to the first question, which is based on a power diode reverse recovery cara. For a diode, reverse recovery time is defined as a time between the instant diode current becomes zero and the instant reverse recovery current decays to. So that is the question. So uh, many of you might know the answer because we are studying it. Answer is 25 percentage of IRM. So I will just explain the concept how it comes. So, so this is basically the diode recovery reverse recovery cara which you have drawn which you have studied right so so likewise this it it will be decaying and so we have one so this is the point the diode current is becoming zero right this is the instant at which the diode current is becoming zero and finally this is reaching a maximum value so this is this is what we call as ta and then so this is IRR, the maximum value, and zero instant reverse current decreases to. So this is actually this complete will be TRR and this will be TB. So this is one by four, so twenty five percentage of IRR. So what do you mean by reverse recovery time? Reverse recovery sign that is TRR, TRR, which is equal to TA plus TB. It is a time instant which in which the diode current becomes zero and the instant, the reverse recovery current, not it is not the point up to zero, it is up to here only. So it becomes one by four or 25 percentage of IR. This IRM and IRR are all same only. Hope you understood. So moving to the second question. In a diode, the cutting voltage and forward voltage. So you might know the characteristic of diode. The IV cara you know. VI cara or IV cara, whatever you can say. So for a diode, what will be the IV cara? So current will be there, voltage will be there. So cara will be somewhat like this, no? So, silicon or germanium, so whatever you take. So, germanium you can take. So, this will be 0.7 volt, that is the cutting voltage. And forward voltage drop will be 1 volt, option B. So, cutting voltage is 0.7 volt, voltage water drop is 1 volt. Question number 3 is based on softness factor. So, for soft, what, is, what do you mean by softness factor? So, for different types of diode, you have studied a fast recovery diode, then soft recovery, soft diode. So, what is softness factor? Softness factor is the ratio of TB by TA. So, if a diode has a softness factor equal to 1, it is called soft recovery. So, S is equal to 1 means it is soft recovery. And for softness factor less than unity, it is it is known as fast or snappy recovery. So, S is less than 1 is we called fast or it is also called snappy recovery diodes. So, these are the two cases. So, option D is the answer. Question number 4. Reverse recovery current and diode depends upon. So, we have just drawn the cara. So, reverse recovery current is depending upon IF. That is actually the forward field current. So, reverse recovery current is depending upon the forward field current. Option A. Question number 5 is regarding MOSFET. So, why I am making you do all these questions is this will give you a revision. Or if you don't know the answer, means you, need to, you, you again need to go back and study the concept from the first 11 videos. So, uh, because these concepts are required in the coming modules. Yeah. Our MOSFET has three terminals. What are they? MOSFET means drain, source and gate. As compared to a MOSFET, 
a BJT has. So you have to tell the uh, properties of BJT, not MOSFET. We are comparing MOSFET with the BJT. And what are the properties of BJT they are asking? So BJT has higher switching losses. That's why we are using MOSFET, right? But lower conduction losses. So BJT has higher switching loads, but lower conduction loads. Question number seven, IGBT. So first of all, we throw MOSFET. There we show so that it has grain, uh, uh, gate, drain, and source. Here, collector, emitter, and gate. IGBT will have a collector, emitter, and gate. Question number eight. The number of PN junctions in a tire is tough. So this question number eight and nine is very interesting. So we will just, I'll just give you the answer from here because I have kept in my PPT. So what is meant by silicon? So it has three PN junctions. So SCR means PN, PN. So junction one, it has a junction one, junction two, and junction three. So it has in total three junctions. So by simple, we can represent it as like anode and cathode will be there, and this will be the gate terminal. So it has to, uh, different modes of operation. Forward blocking mode is positive bias applied to the SCR by connecting the anode terminal to the positive and cathode terminal to the negative of the battery. Under this condition, junctions J1 and J3 get forward bias, while junction J2 get reverse bias. So the number of blocked junction is 1. So only J2 is blocked. So answer to question number 11. When a thyristor is forward by the number of blocked PN junction is 1. So forward conduction means the SCA can be made to contact and answer to the number of PN junctions in a thyristor is 3, not 2. 3 junctions are there. And reverse blocking mode, also you can you can just verify. So if, a, if an SCR is said to be reverse bias, what are the number? Of, so this leads to the reverse biasing junction of J1 and J3. So two junctions will be reverse biased. Two junctions will be off. If it is blocked, the pain junction will be two. If it is reverse biased. Okay. So this is a very interesting question. Question number. Question number ten actually. So by looking at the simple, you must say which which are the simples actually. So we have a BJT here, MOSFET here, IGBT. And MCT. So first of all, we'll go for BJT. So BJT means you know emis emitter base collector. So this will be BJT. So A will be going to two, and then if you think about MOSFET, MOSFET we know it like drain source, drain source and gate. So this will be MOSFET, and IGBT is collector, emitter, and gate. And so this will be IGBT and this will be MCT. So what will be answer? A2, B3. So option A will be your answer. Oh, again, we need to cross check. I C4 should come out. So option A. So 2, 3, 4, 1. It will go. 2, 3, 4, 1. Just cross check. Question number 11 is about. So answer to this question, I'm not giving. I'll just give you the theory. In a thyristor, the ratio of holding current to latching current is. So, what do you mean by latching current? It is the smallest amount of anode current which is required to preserve the thyristor in on state. So, latching means on, turn on. Once the thyristor turn on, then the gate signal has been detached. It is correlated to the process of turning on of the thyristor. It has two to three times of holding current. So, IL is equal to 2 to 3 times of IH. So in this question, ratio of holding current to IH by IEL, they are asking. So definitely, it should be less than 1, right? Because IH, IL by I, uh, uh, IH by IEL is 1 by 2 or 2 or 3. So it should be definitely less than 1. So we can, we can go for option A. So, and... It does not depend upon the magnitude of the gate current. And holding current is related to turning off of the thyristor. It is a minimum value of anode current of current of below, which stops its conduction in forward direction. It is less than the latching current. So holding current will always be less than latching current. So I hope uh, you are following my lectures and you understood what is what are what we are supposed to study in module one.
so in module one basically we have studied about uh from the first if you if you see from the beginning so there are a lot of lectures that i have covered uh, the 11 videos are there if you see from the beginning just wait we'll see uh, i'll just give you a quick rewind so if you see from the beginning so in the first class uh uh, we have seen about first class we have talked about what is the subject then difference between power uh, and, and power power diode and signal diode we have seen then different energy scenarios so these are just basics power and signal diodes then different types of converters what this module is all all about we have seen then we start, studied about power diode structure vi cara and reverse recovery cara so based on reverse recovery cara only we have seen the cutting voltage and the, sorry, the TRR and our softness factor and all we have seen. And then we moved on to power MOSFET. So power MOSFET basically what is the structure and all. You can refer to the videos. It's very well explained there. Then we moved on to power IGBT. Similarly, the structure, CARA, everything was covered. You can go back and see the video. Then we had a comparison of VJT, MOSFET and IGBT. A very good comparison examination point of view as well as in your laboratory this will be very important then we discuss about wide gan band gap devices like silicon control and gallium nitrate so the band gap, band gap will be more compared to normal silicon or germanium uh, diodes and then a uh, the little bit theory on that why we are using it and then we moved on to the very important topic that is the, the, the three terminal four layer three terminal silicon controlled rectifier so we all discussed about that then uh, if its properties all caras and all then we talked about the, how to turn on and turn off this here its characteristic everything and then but how to protect it so while you are using say we need to ensure its protection also di by dt and dv by dt protection snubber and everything we discussed snubber circuits then two transistor analogy actually comes like a derivation and all because ncr is actually two transistor now so how that two transistor analog is happening here that also we discussed and then turn on mothers how to turn on so we need to provide a gate pulse now how to give this gate pulse all these things uh, so we need to so turn on means latching current turn off means holding all these things we have seen then dv by dt triggering everything and then gate drive circuits how to drive the circuit different types of methods to couple isolation transformer so strictly as per your syllabus only i have explained and this finally is about uh, different numerical problems of concept building so numerical problems are not there for university exam but this will be very useful if you want to study the concept okay thank you have a nice day